Today we're going to give you our top five bow picks for 2022. Just a reminder guys, head on over to mikesarchery.com to pick up any of our latest logo gear. We got plenty of hats and shirts as well as any gear you might need for your next adventure. Welcome back to Mike's Archery's YouTube and today we are going to dive into our top five bow picks for 2022. Now that all the new releases have come out and we have got a chance to kind of go over all those bows and look in depth as to what they have to offer, we have put together a list of our top five choices. Now we, these are in no particular order. We don't have necessarily a number one or a number five. We just felt these were the top five bows for 2022. And I will be honest, when you start digging into all these flagship models from all the different manufacturers, there is very little difference. It's something that's gonna be a personal preference. It's gonna be aesthetics and looks as to what fits you best, what feels the best to you. So as always, we're gonna recommend that you go out and shoot these bows to be able to pick what is your best option. Because the difference between all these top flagship bows, you're not gonna be disappointed in any of them. They're all fantastic bows and you really gotta nitpick to find things that are a problem or an issue that you don't like with any of them. So let's get started. One of our first bows that we chose for our top five was the PSE Evo XF. Whether you choose the 30 or the 33 is up to you. It just depends on whether you like a longer or shorter axle to axle bow. We felt that PSE did a great redesign on these cams with that E2 and S2 cam options and it gives a better performance over the Evolve cam that they've had for the last several years. Now we have been a fan of that Evolve cam and it is most certainly a little smoother cam coming through the draw cycle but the performance that you're getting out of these e2 and s2 cams has been optimized for your draw length and depending on which cam you choose to fit your draw length and your setup you're going to get the maximum performance that cam was designed to give two inches more peak weight as it comes through the entire draw curve you're going to feel that but it does give it more speed and better performance out of this bow as we said it's not quite as smooth as the old cam but it is still an exceptional setup and the bow is going to have an exceptional feel even with that increased performance. They did keep with some of the integrated options on this bow allowing you to put an integrated rest on there. But they do have a little ways to go because you cannot get an integrated sight system on the PSE. But overall the most efficient bow that we have seen at your specific draw length and it's going to be one of the better feeling and shooting bows on the market. Now our second bow on our list is going to be the Hoyt Ventum Pro. Again Coming in at a 30 or a 33 inch model, you're gonna to need to pick which axle to axle that you need for your particular setup and what feels best to you. We felt Hoyt did a great job redesigning that cam system, but keeping the same great feel from the HBX going into the Pro models. It still kept that same draw cycle and we were fearing that it was gonna lose some of that great feel. They did not. But what they did do with that redesign of the cam, they also redesigned their integrate system. We felt that the integrate system from last year was good, but they made it even better with the Picatinny mounts up front, allowing to do away with some extra parts and components and extra connection points. It just was a sleeker, better looking system with the integrated rest, quiver, as well as that sight system being all built into the riser a little bit nicer than it was in the past. They did the redesign on the grip, which also gave it a little better feel and just overall probably has one of the best draw cycles of any of our top five picks. So if Hoyt bows are something that you've been looking at, the new Ventum Pro series is a fantastic choice. Now the third bow on our top five list is the Matthews V3X. Again, coming in a 29 or a 33, we felt both of those bows were fantastic options. Now in the past, we didn't like that shorter axle to axle, but Matthews moved that up to a 29 inch and we feel that is a pretty good sweet spot. And if you like that longer axle to axle bow, most certainly look at the 33 in that V3X. Now we felt with the redesign on their integrate system for this year, it was one of the more innovative and better integrated systems. With the integrated rest still being there on the back, as well as a bridge lock sight system with that dovetail option sliding directly through the riser, and that new low pro quiver system gave it an overall clean, sleek, and one of the best integrated systems on the market. Now, as always, Matthew still has that great feel in the hand with an extremely dead shot. And as we have tested for the last several years, 
Matthews has been one of the quietest bows we have tested for probably the last five years. So overall, this bow is a fantastic setup, being fast, quiet, great feel, and the integrated system makes Matthews one of the top choices for 2022. Now the fourth bow that we chose for our top five was the Prime Inline System. And this is coming in the Prime Inline 1, 3, and 5, being a 31, 33, or 35 inch axle to axle. They gave a little bit more variety there as far as the axle to axle lengths if you want that exceptionally long 35 or that really short 31 or something in the middle, they've got a bow there that's gonna fit you. But we felt that Prime made some of the most changes from anyone from last year. Doing away with that parallel cam design that they've had and going to that inline cam design, it looks similar to everybody else's cams. Doing away with that exceptionally difficult string system, giving you a lot of points of contact and extra stretch in the string possibly. It was just something that I think scared a lot of guys on the market. But the new inline system, even though it looks like everybody else's cam, it is designed very differently, allowing that cable to be pulled in line to the center of that cam. And then of course the shim system that they put in to this model allows you to swap those shims out at a shop very easily for tunability on this bow and was one of the bigger changes we saw from last year. One of the other things we noticed about Prime was the longer bows are faster. That's something we have not seen out of anybody else and is not traditionally the norm. But as these bows get longer in axle to axle, they were actually getting better performance and faster. On top of that, they are going to have the most solid back wall of any of the bows that we picked for our top five because of the limb stop option. All the other bows on our list are a cable stop option and they do give a great back wall and a good feel. But if you like that rock solid back wall, Prime is gonna have a little more solid back wall with that limb stop. But overall, Prime gives you an excellent option for 2022 and it's one that you should probably take a look at if you've shied away from Prime due to their looks in the past. Now the last bow on our top five list is the Hoyt RX-7. It is a complete redesign from the RX-5 of last year. They did what Hoyt needed to do with a carbon riser. Not only did they improve the integrated system by building it into that carbon riser, but they got the weight down and that was something that we had knocked them on in the past, being one of the heaviest carbon bows out there and even as heavy or heavier than an aluminum bow, really didn't make a whole lot of sense to purchase that bow if weight was a factor. But the RX-7 fixes all those issues. It gives you a new redesigned look on the riser and aesthetically it looks fantastic. The integrated system is better than last year's being built into that riser, giving you that option for the sights up front, as well as their new quiver system and the integrate rest, all just sleek and clean on that new riser design. Now, if we had one bad thing to say about it, it is the price. It is the most expensive bow on our top five list coming in at $1,800 retail. But if you're gonna play in the carbon riser world, then you're gonna pay for it. For those looks, that feel, that extra lightness, to get a carbon riser, you're gonna be in that $1,800 range, whether you choose Hoyt or some other manufacturer. But overall, the RX-7 is a fantastic setup and a great bow if you're the guy that wants the best of everything and price is no object, definitely take a look at Hoyt's RX-7 for 2022. Now I know we're gonna get knocked for leaving Bowtech and Elite and maybe some others out of this top five list and there is absolutely nothing wrong with the Bowtech setup or the Elite bows. They make some great bows and there are other manufacturers out there that are making some great top end bows that you should probably take a look at. The only reason we did not put Bowtech or Elite on there was just for the simple fact that we didn't feel they made enough changes from last year or anything that was exceptionally different from what they've had in the past. We still feel that the Bowtech deadlock system is probably one of the easiest and best tuning systems. We just didn't feel that the SR350 or the CP28 was a huge difference from what we had seen from the Solution or their other models in the past years. And Elite has pretty much stayed the same. Still a great feeling bow, a great shooting bow, and it is most definitely one of the top picks for a flagship bow out there. We just didn't feel that it made our top five. Now, if you're looking at any of these bow models from any of these manufacturers, one thing we have noticed for this year is lead times. You know, we're putting this video out here in June, and if this is something that you're wanting to get a brand new bow for 2022, you probably need to get one on order now. If it's not something that your pro shop has on the shelf and you're wanting to customize it in some way, most of these manufacturers are running between three and six weeks lead time. So if you're not finding these bows on the shelf, you need to get on it as soon as possible so that you can get these bows in hand with plenty of time to get them set up and plenty of time to practice before season gets here. 
There are some exceptions. There's a few models out there that may take a little bit longer, but what we've seen across the board has been a three to six week lead time on most manufacturers. Now, I know we didn't go into depth on a lot of these bows and just gave you our top five overview, but if you want more in-depth looks at any of these models, take a look. There should have been links in the video as they were coming through so that you can go take a look at our in-depth videos that go over all the speed ratings, complete weight breakdowns, how these bows feel and perform, and just a great in-depth review from our channel at Mike's Archery. So if any of these new bows for 2022 is something that you're looking for, then be certain to call us at Mike's Archery, and we'll be glad to give you any pointers, tips, or direction that we can for you to make the right choice to get the bow that works best for you.